turbo on this Super D pickup truck cannot be found on any of its competitors. It delivers up to 30 PSI of boost, and it acts more like a twin turbo than a single one. It allows me to tow a trailer up this deep grade at 45 miles an hour and still pull out and pass slower traffic. Now both these trucks are pulling 10,400 pounds. The go was for flat out. The test is identical and you can see how easily we drove around them. Well given that we've got a few minutes before that Dodge even gets here, let's take an inside look at this new Power Stroke engine. This came right out of one of our test trucks and I thought this would be a great chance to get familiar with very, very progressive thinking. You know, the Ford designers were on their game when they came up with this thing. Because if you understand turbocharging, you understand the value of getting the pressure from the exhaust to the turbo as rapidly as you can. You don't want pressure lost. So, what did they do? Rather than locate the turbo in the conventional spot, which gives you a longer throttle lag, they put it right on top of the engine. Now, this is where things get interesting. Traditionally, you're used to the intake manifold sitting here, the air coming into the valves at the top, and out on the opposite side. Game changer. These are the exhaust manifolds. The exhaust is instantly to the turbo. So how do you get the air in? Well, there's your inlets, and to give you an idea, the valve covers are actually the intake manifold as well. The runner takes the air in and delivers it to the port. This is smart thinking. Now, how does all this work? Let me show you. This is the turbo unit itself, as you saw it sitting on the engine. As you can see, this is the hot side. This is the exhaust side. You can see the impeller there. Here's the, again, the thinking gets to be pretty darn, well, progressive. Twin impeller for response and pressure for big torque and power at the other end. You want to be able to pick up the gas pedal and instantly have a reaction, and then when things really go to work, you want to take advantage of that big boost to get the load up the road. This really is the truth about trucks. Terrain like this might overheat a Silverado or a Ram. Not this truck. Super Duty's been designed with nine gallons of heavy duty coolant from day one. This thing defines towing confidence. You know, when it comes to cooling, most of us don't give it much thought. Good news for you, Ford gave it a lot of thought. This is the engine right out of our test truck. I want to show you some stuff you don't generally get to see stuff you're really going to be grateful for when you own one of these things. This is the cylinder head, and there's some clever thinking here. They actually move water very rapidly right around the top of the combustion chamber. This draws the heat away from these valves and helps keep this head stable. To enhance that, a larger, bigger in volume and slower in speed set of chambers to pull heat off the top of the head and circulate through the block. That's innovative thinking. Now, how are you moving that water? Well, you got a primary pump. We're talking about nine gallons of reservoir coolant at a rate of 125 gallons per minute. We're talking huge volume here. And guess what? There's a secondary pump. You think they weren't thinking about this system? Oh, and how about this redundancy? Two thermostats should, for any reason, one of these fail, the other one takes over and allows for bypass. You're not going to get deserted somewhere. Oh, and in terms of servicing, think about it quick disconnect hoses. How innovative is this? You don't even see this on race cars. Two C-clips and this thing's out of there. That's how you use your head. Chevrolet still using a bypass hose between the bottom of the manifold and the top of the water pump. There isn't even a bypass hose on here. It's all internal. And in terms of replacing hoses, you tell me which one you'd like to take a shot at. One quick clip or this whole big monster. I got a hunch, this thing ain't four dollars. Telling you, when it comes to cooling, and certainly on the topic of overheating, not with this truck. You know, it's interesting, once you clear the crest of a hill, how you're no longer concerned if you had the power to get up it. Now you're concerned about, do you have the brakes to get it stopped? Well, here's the good news. The same Power Stroke engine that was your friend coming up here with best-in-class towing is now going to work with you to help slow the truck down. The Ford engineers refer to it as integrated exhaust braking. Bottom line is this. You put it in the tow haul mode, and every time you touch the brake pedal ever so lightly, it will downshift the engine and make the whole transmission work for you. In short, they refer to it as, well, negative torque, 
what we're talking about is taking the engine that was all the power coming up and now making it one big giant air pump for going down. It gives you about 100 horsepower of reversed working. Very, very clever stuff. That's what you call thinking about the details. If you've driven pickup trucks before, you know there were times where you would have loved to have just been in total control of the range of gears that transmission stayed in. Well, here's the good news. Now you can. Ford refers to it as progressive range select, and it's so simple to operate. You just hit the little switch on the column, it brings up the screen and shows you the range of gears in which you are operating. And here's the really trick news, by moving that button either up or down, you can control the range of gears in which you're operating. Terrific control. But there are those of you out there that want even more control than that. Well, here it comes. You can now pull the lever down into manual and you are now responsible for every gear change. It locks up the core converter and literally you shift the vehicle through every gear. It's been a long time since we've ever seen this much driver information, this much driver input, and ultimately this much driver control. It's exactly this kind of thinking that keeps Super Duty number one. You know, a lot of conversation these days surrounding transmissions, and I understand it, they're a critical component. There's the things that they obviously are supposed to do, but I think the thing you gotta ask yourself is, what do you want it to do? Well, let me simplify that for you. You wanna make darn sure that transmission's working for you, that it takes the power and torque of this monstrous motor and all of its capability and puts it at the rear wheels, because just making power and torque in the engine compartment ain't a lot of help. It needs to get to the tires. Now, in all fairness, when Chevrolet teamed up with Allison and came up with this multi-case transmission, it set a new delta. This was a breakthrough trans at the time. But Ford took a little bit different road and decided to move the bar one more notch. And in all fairness, this new six-speed single-case torque shift transmission is really a breakthrough. Nowhere can this thing leak because there's no seams between cases. And that six-speed, the way they spread those gears, critical. You got that stump puller first, you love it. But at the same time, you want fuel economy. So two, two overdrive top gears to make sure we slow that motor down. And how about launch? You know, you get all loaded up and you want to get that mass in motion. Boy, there's nothing more painful to listen to that transmission slip. This torque converter locked up fully at 900 RPM. This Super Duty is equipped with a surprisingly tall 3.31 ring and pinion. Now, first question comes to your mind, great for fuel economy, but what compromise to capability? None. Ford went the extra mile this time. This new six-speed transmission is magic. It gives you those nice wide ratios. So that 3.31, excellent for fuel economy on the high end, and yet with that wide gear span, you've got all the grunt towing power you could possibly ask for. Yeah, there's a lot of ways to define towing confidence, but when it comes to this six-speed torque shift transmission, Ford thinks it's come up with the ultimate definition. on down the road and life is good then wham all of a sudden you feel that trailer start to sway sure enough you check your mirrors and you're seeing sides a trailer well almost instantly the super duty's standard trailer sway control starts to help you recover control of your trailer ford recently tested their systems against the competition let's look at ram for the ram this is a lot of trailer motion. It adds up to feet at the tail end of the trailer. Force trailer sway control is the way to go. All right, I realized all of that happened very fast. This is hard to demonstrate, but this is breakthrough technology. And once you see how it breaks down, you're not gonna wanna drive without it. Let me show you how this works, and we'll do it in slow motion so you get a better sense of just how good this technology is. Okay, as they say in the movies, let's break this down frame by frame, because what you just saw, well, that happened in mils of a second. I'm gonna exaggerate a little bit and give you more time to see what's really going on. Should this trailer start to sway behind this truck, this system, this sway control will now kick in and let me show you what it does. Should the trailer go over to here, it brings on the brakes of both the trailer to try and pull it back in line 
and it will pull on the opposite side brakes of the truck to stabilize this whole system. No less true of going this direction. Should it go here, trailer brakes come on, and this side of the truck applies its brakes. It will even reduce the throttle to get everything slowed up so you get this thing well cleaned up, if you will. Now, what's slick about this technology is the speed in which it reacts. Bang, the system's engaged. You're already getting the trailer stabilized. And even if the trailer doesn't have brakes, they'll use a the truck's brakes to get this thing stabilized. This isn't just good technology. This is awesome technology. Not long from now, people will refuse to tow with a truck that doesn't have it. Candidly, what shocked my team the most is that Dodge hasn't even addressed this technology in a market where you know the customer tows? Come on. Here's a big thing. Ford is already going to be in about their fourth year with this technology, and what they've learned in that developing time is that they've come up with a thing called E over H. That's what the engineers call it. Let me break it down. What they're talking about is the E stands for the electronic actuator that's usually in the front of the truck. And then, of course, the H stands for the hydraulics is usually how the brakes are brought on on the trailer. They've already made that compatible which means this system works with nearly every trailer design out there. Good stuff. And the fact that it's standard on all Super Duty pickup trucks, including the Duallys, awesome stuff. What a breakthrough. This really is the truth about trucks. Experiments like this magnify the stresses on an engine. Long grades, big temperature changes, very, very hot cylinders to cold shock. It challenges the engineers to stabilize the block of cylinder heads and keep that engine sealed. The new 6.7 liter, home run. As you clear the summit and start downhill, you naturally close the throttle. It's right here that the engine becomes subject to what engineers refer to as cold shock, meaning the engine is inhaling very cool air. And the sudden and rapid temperature change stresses both the cylinder heads and the block. It's how you engineer for that that makes a difference in long-term durability. Essential to payload confidence is durability, and durability is in the details. You talk about science, boy, there are a lot of it going on here. These engines make huge horsepower, and they do it with big pressure differentials. Here's what I'm talking about. You got a turbo that puts a lot of pressure in, and then you got something that's not talked about much, and that's when you lift your throttle, and we get a thing called cold shock. It's a whole different reaction for the motor. The big challenge in an engine like this is sealing it. To make sure things don't walk around, well, to give you an idea, here's where the science of engineering comes in play six head bolts to make sure the cylinder is completely surrounded and completely sealed. To compound that, how about stainless steel gaskets to go right underneath this thing to make certain we never lose that combustion chamber seal. And of course, you want to make sure the valve covers don't leak. Again, stainless steel, big pressure changes. Even underneath the turbo, a stainless steel gasket. Another big challenge, making certain that the exhaust manifold doesn't grow and shrink and cause damage. To make sure it remains sealed, different kind of head studs, but they're much longer. Yeah, durability, confidence, it's in the details. All right, let's test diesel fuel economy. Now this test is going to pit Chevrolet Silverado 2500 with their 6.6 liter Duramax diesel against Ford Super Duty F250 with a 6.7 liter Power Stroke diesel. Both trucks have seen recent improvements. Both trucks use optimum rear axle ratios and 17 inch wheels. These trucks will follow a prescribed route with city driving, suburban driving, and some highway driving, all on the controlled roads of the Michigan Proving Grounds, which by the way is huge. Each will be loaded with 1,500 pounds of payload and exactly three gallons of fuel. The fuel flow will be carefully measured with a digital flow meter. Using a GPS-based data logging system, exact distance traveled will be recorded down to the last foot. Let's see how they do. And then when you're done, leave your light on, stay by the side of the road, we'll come find you. We're still going. Forward, 2.7.
All right, the results. Chevrolet Silverado went 52.5 miles on three gallons of diesel fuel. The Super Duty, however, went 57.6 miles on the same amount of fuel. Or put another way, Silverado's MPG averaged 17.5, while Ford's Super Duty was 19.2. Super Duty clearly holds the best in class status for diesel fuel economy in real world testing. Fans of gas engines are going to love this next comparison. Three competitors for this challenge, all regular cabs and two-wheel drives. Super Duty F250 with a 6.2-liter gas-powered V8 versus Chevrolet Silverado at 2500 with a 6-liter V8 and Ram 2500 with a 5.7 Hemi V8. These are the largest gasoline engines offerings for all three. All three competitors have 3.73 axle ratios. All three competitors have 17-inch wheels. All three competitors are let out in truck trim levels with an 8-foot cargo box. This test is for the fuel efficiency of the gasoline powertrains, and they were loaded to 1,500 pounds of payload each. Three gallons of fuel on a closed driving loop of the Michigan Proving Grounds. Every drop of gas will be carefully measured while driving city, suburban, and highway test segments. Every foot travel is logged with the GPS data points for exact distance, speed, smooth starts, and stops. Now let's run the test. The first time the alarm goes off, they get it off the road. Okay, hold that 35. Just below half. Chevy has died. Dodge is out. Now the results. Ram achieved 48 miles on three gallons of gasoline. Silverado went 48 miles. And Super Duty went 51 miles on three gallons of gasoline. In a segment where virtually every drop of fuel counts towards the bottom line, Super Duty 6.2 performs better than all the rest. the development of the all-new 6.7 liter power stroke diesel, the engineers were given three goals. They wanted more power, they were told to give us best-in-class fuel economy, and Ford wanted a cleaner exhaust. To make that goal, let me show you how they pulled it off. You're going to be learning about a product called DEF. It stands for Diesel Exhaust Fluid, and it's going to frankly become the new, well, standard of any manufacturer meeting diesel requirements. Now I'm going to take you through this stripped down truck because I want to see where DEF is stored. It's pretty darn convenient to live with. It's a five gallon tank, sits right here in the mid chassis. See the goal of DEF and why it's so efficient is they actually spray it right into the exhaust. The engine is not involved. They spray it right to the exhaust to reduce the NOx emissions. Pretty clever technique. Others have not decided to do that. Now in terms of living with DEF, let me show you what we're talking about here. This is what it looks like. It's clear. You can buy it anywhere oil is sold. Now, generally, when this five gallon tank is full, you're only going to have it topped off when you take the truck in for oil changes. But should, for any reason, a little warning light come on in the dash to let you know you're getting low, buy this, pour it in a cap that sits right next to the diesel cap on the side of the Ford truck. Now, interestingly enough, Chevrolet, in fact, went to DEF as well, very effective technique. Unfortunately, they decided to locate that cap well, under the hood and near the backside of the engine. I'd let it cool down a little bit before I reach in there to try and fill it, should you ever have to do so. But the one that strikes us really curious, made my team just about crazy, is the fact that Dodge is putting a bad mouth on this. They're throwing arrows at DEF left and right. We find that kind of odd. Turns out what they want to do is, well, not invest any money in that motor. They want to give you last year's engine in this year's truck, which by the way is heavier and thirstier. Now, in and of itself, okay, perhaps that's the technique. But the fact that they're actually saying that, well, we don't think you should use this, strikes us curious because they're already requiring it in their chassis cabs. Oh, and one last caveat. While they're bad-mouthing DEF, 
one of the things they're saying is, oh, you don't want to spend the money. But what they don't want to tell you is, because of DEF, the fuel economy is so improved, it more than offsets the cost of this product. Yeah, if you're a fleet customer, that's music to your ears. If you want to know the new way to spell clean exhaust, it's DEF. My team and I have been testing these trucks for weeks. And after we got done testing them, we took them apart. See, we wanted Ford to show us so we could show you how they've accomplished the number of claims they've made. Case in point, we showed you the science behind how they got better fuel economy, best in class, in fact. They let us show you this engine and the kind of drivability, torque, and capability it had. But let me share with you some discoveries we've made on our own that frankly stood out compared to the competition. The way they build this engine and the benefits to you, frankly, as a direct result. Case in point, we're talking about a whole new casting system called compacted graphite iron. It makes a stronger, more stable block, and that in the end makes the engine live longer and be more efficient. How about an engine that talks to you? You know what? They've got what they call extended maintenance. What they're talking about is the engine will tell you when it needs an oil change, not a sticker up on the windshield. If you're driving it hard, making it work for a living, it's going to say to you, we better change the oil to protect me. But if you're doing it light duty on the highway, it says, don't panic. We don't need to spend the money yet. The oil's still good. I'll get back to you when I need an oil change. I love this sophisticated system. Very, very clever stuff. And then, of course, the subtlety of detail when we talk about, well, a thing called slant face bull pistons. Now, why get so sophisticated here? Because most diesel manufacturers don't want to talk to you about a thing called soot. Soot is an issue, and the reduction of it is a big home run. Well, Ford came up with a design in their piston to reduce soot almost by 50%. And by doing that, that means less of that soot is going to the particulate filter, which means they don't have to fire it off to regenerate it. Very good stuff. In fact, they've got it down to about as half as many regens. And every time you light that thing off, you're using a little bit of fuel. It's the subtlety of detail. And then even this kind of clever stuff. Now, you'll never have to service this, but we were fascinated at the attention to detail here for long-term engine life. We all know that there is air vapor down in there inside that crankcase and that it carries some oil with it. Ford didn't want that oil going down to the combustion chamber again. So to separate the oil from the air, they came up with this conical setup that actually spins the oil out of the air. The great news here is not only is it cleaner in emissions and you never have to service or replace it, it lowers tailpipe emissions as well. And get, keeping that coking off the valves and the pistons, boy, talk about long-term engine durability. Very, very clever designs, stuff that they should be quite proud of. It's innovative thinking like that that makes them the leader. It's innovations like that you won't find on the competition. And that's the truth about trucks. the course of our teardown and discovery, we were surprised to see the differences in hardware each manufacturer chose for their trucks to go off-road. You know what? This is a clear case of letting the parts speak for themselves, and then you decide. We look at the Ford. It's famous for its monobeam front suspension, frankly kind of renowned for being just about bulletproof. But they added it to the frame by giving it this monstrous control arm, obviously designed to take the big hits. And to help absorb those big hits, a long and travel coil spring. Nice ride, good handling, and plenty of strength. When we looked at the Dodge, we were actually glad to see they'd made progress, but it's certainly not top again. Let me give you an example. Fairly strong front end tube, fairly chintzy on the control arms. I'm not dead sure that wants to go off-road hardball. And though I like the diameter of the spring, I wish it was a little bit longer to give it more travel to help absorb the big hits. You know, I can't speak to your backyard, but I live in the mountains and they don't look anything like this. This is rugged stuff. Now, if you're an extreme off-roader and or if your career demands as a professional, you bring your work truck up into this environment, you already know you don't bring a toy to do the job here. You better bring a very tough truck. To that end, we've really come to appreciate how well built this truck is and a lot of its capabilities. And one of the available features for it that we've really become fond of is what Ford refers to as their LCD productivity screen. Now, frankly, I wasn't sure this would be that useful. Holy mackerel, is this thing neat to have. First thing it does, it'll actually walk you through the steps to get engaged into 4x4 low. And it will reassure you that it is, in fact, fully engaged. Another slick item. You know, they're already, through the use of advanced track, measuring the pitch, yaw, roll angles of the vehicle. Well, 
Ford thought, why not share that information with the driver? So boom, it comes up. So when you're sitting on an incline, you know what your pitch and angles are and what the roll rate is. This is good stuff. And another subtle detail that I really had no idea how valuable it would be, but when you come to a stop just prior to going down a steep descent, this thing actually tells you what direction your wheels are pointed. No more rolling down the window and looking out to see. You have that information going in. You know, if you understand this terrain until we tested here, I didn't. You need these kind of tools. This is what gives you the advantage. We also left here with a whole newfound appreciation for what built Ford Tough really means.